Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be here. I'm so glad to be able to share the word with you guys. Last week, we got to enter into our series, and we learned about our wonderful counselor. And that message spoke a lot of volume to my heart and to my life, because there's many times that you don't know who you can turn to. You don't know who you can talk to. But learning last week that we have somebody who can counsel us, somebody who can guide us, someone who gives us direction, someone who also corrects us when we're wrong. And we have our Lord and Savior to be our wonderful counselor. And what we get to learn about today is how he is our mighty God. And if you can, I have a short video clip for you guys to watch, so please pull your attention to the screen. Well, like I said, it's so, so good for you guys to be here. And I just want to recap just a little bit of what we learned last week. And the only reason why I want to recap that is because every part of this series in us learning who God is in our life, it's kind of like there's a direction of flow that you have to understand. And the first one with Wonderful Counsel with Pastor Michael speaking about that last week, I took it to heart because I think about the world and the generation that we live in today. There's so many people, there's so many people in our world who need a wonderful counselor in their life. There's so many people in this world who need somebody to be able to talk to. And there's, some, there's people in this world who need guidance. There's some people in this world who need deliverance. And there's people in this world who need a direction in their life. And the only person that can give that to them is Jesus Christ. The only person that can help guide your life correctly is not, is not the advice from your best friend. It's not the advice from your close peers. That can help, but it's not going to change your life. The only advice that will change your life is the advice from a true counselor with knowledge from above. And I'm reminded by the messages that we learned from Pastor Khan with the superior wisdom that we get from our Father above. Can you only imagine superior wisdom with a wonderful counselor? You get exactly what you need. You get exactly what you need in your life. And there's many of us in this room that even still need a wonderful counselor. And I challenge you that you go and you ask God to counsel your life, to help and guide and direct you. There are many times when, last week when Pastor Michael was speaking, I was like, man, that's spot on. It's spot on. Why? Is because I think that the generation that we are living in now that people are searching and seeking for help, but I think that it is our job as Christians to show them who that wonderful counselor is. And if we don't do that part in our, our part of the kingdom, a lot of people are going to miss out on the advice and the good things that we have because our Father is a wonderful counselor. And it's our job to go out and tell the world those things. It's our job to go and witness to our friends. It's our job to go and witness to our family. Because I'm telling you, if you are in a place or if you're in a position in your life that you know that there's people that need counseling, you know that there's people in your life that need direction, and even if that word's for yourself, that you need direction and counseling, there's only one person you can truly go to. You know, a lot of times people come to me and they ask me, so what should I do, Pastor Sam? What, what about this situation? And, and I had somebody come up to me recently and ask me about a situation. What should I, what should I do? And I told him, hey, you should pray about this. And, and, I, and there's no advice that I can give to you that is better than the advice that you can get from God. The advice that I give to you is I have to wait and take a moment. And one thing that I learned from Pastor Khan is that he's always said on the pulpit, there's one thing that my kids hate about me. And, 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 and I was like, well, what is it that I hate about my dad? I don't know. But what it is is when I call him for advice, he takes like five to ten minutes to give you a response back sometimes. And you're on the phone with him. You're like, hey, Dad, uh, what should I do about this situation? It's like silent for a while. Uh, dad, you still there? Dad, you still there? And then he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And what he's doing is he was processing all of the things before he tells me. 
And, and, and what I feel is if the same position that we are in with our Father in heaven, a lot of times we'll go to him for counseling, but then we don't wait for the response. We come to God, God, I need your help. I need your help. I need you to deliver me. I need you to change my life and give me direction and change the situation that I'm in. But then we don't wait for the response. You see, a lot of us have a problem with having our, our patience with our response with our Father from above because we need it now. We need it now. One thing that I believe that will help you is if you can talk to God on a daily basis, you would understand how he speaks to you. And Pastor Michael said that perfectly last time too. There are a lot of times where you don't hear from God, but you know that he has put an impression on your heart to tell you exactly what you need to do. There are times where the Holy Spirit tells you what to do, but it's your job to respond to that. Today, we get the opportunity to receive a word and, and understand who he is as a mighty God. And, and for me, when I get to speak about this portion, but a mighty God, I, I thought to myself, Lord, how do I even display this? How do I even speak about this? Being a mighty God. Everybody knows that about you. Everybody knows that you're a mighty God. Everybody sees you as a higher being. What, what is there to explain? And a lot of people understand it, don't they? And as I thought about mighty God, and I thought about that over and over and over and over, I thought to myself, you know what? There may be an understanding of him being mighty, but there may not be an understanding of how he can be mighty in your life. And there's a difference between understanding that there's a higher being, and, but there's a difference from understanding that that higher being lives inside of you. And he's a part of your life. There's a big difference between that. Knowing somebody and actually letting that person be a part of your life is totally different. I'll tell you this. If you knew, for instance, a, a famous NBA basketball player, you just knew him, it's a difference from you playing basketball with him. There's a difference between you just knowing God inside of a book and actually knowing his power and authority in your life. There's a big difference. And I believe that us reading and understanding and later, later dissecting and looking at what it means to have a mighty God in our life, It'll change your understanding of how you can live life. Why? Because the word mighty, right? When I think of mighty, I, there's only so many characters that I can think of with, that have the word mighty before their names. And, and, and growing up in my generation, you guys probably don't really know, but like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And it's like, that's the only really one besides Mighty Mouse. And why were these characters, why do these characters get the word mighty before their name? And you think of the Power Rangers, if you have kids, you know that they like Power Rangers, or if you grew up in that era of Power Rangers with Tommy and all the Green Ranger and all that kind of stuff, it was like, they never lost. And, and, and it was one of those things where at the end of every episode, you knew, as soon as they fought somebody and they just turned their backs and started walking, you know something was going to blow up behind them, and that was it. That was the end of the episode. You knew you can count on the Power Rangers, and that was what that TV show was about. But the thing is, if we can see the same thing in our life and know that we can count on a mighty God in our life, it's so much better. It's so much better because there's a situation in your life that you think that there's no help, but there's a mighty God out there for you. There's a situation in your life that you think that there's no light. And I'm telling you, our mighty God can shine light on the darkest situation and change your life. But you yourself have to understand what it means to be a mighty God. You know, if we can just think about it and comprehend the fact that his life was so great that one sacrifice for him changed the whole entire world. One sacrifice was all that it took. And it changed the world. You know, I think about something that recently happened is Reinhard Bonnke passed away. And I think about how awesome it was for us to be able to experience him at the arena theater preaching and teaching us about the Holy Spirit flame. And, and I remember learning so many different things from that year and, and the mighty move of God that he had when he went to do crusades and millions of people were getting saved. And you think about how awesome his footprint was that he left on this world. And it's nothing compared to what God has done. And you can see how great someone has done something with the power of God inside of them. And so can you. You can do just that. And many of us in this room don't even, can't even fathom, how can I even do that? How can I even go and speak to my school? How can I even go and speak to my community? How can I help someone from not committing suicide? How can I help somebody that's in a place where they want to give up? What can I do? What can I do? And you cannot do anything unless you have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of your life. Why? Why? Why is because you are not the wonderful counselor, but he is. 
And if he is in your life and the mighty God that is in your life speaks and uses you, there's gonna be some change in that person's life that you're speaking to. My question today is, do you know your mighty God? Do you know who he is? Knowing of knowledge is not what I'm talking about. I'm saying, do you know him? Is he in your life? Is, is he in your family? Is he in your marriage? Is he a part of that? Or is he still just someone that's in a book that you leave on your shelf? And before you come to Sunday, you brush off that book and you bring it to church. Is he a part of your life? Does he mean that much to you to be a mighty God? To have a name as mighty God. You have to understand the weight that that carries of being a mighty God, knowing that we have the best, we have the most powerful, we have the best uh, help that we can get, and that's a part of our life, and he wants to be a part of our life, a mighty God. You know, I, I think about people that are in our world that may not understand mighty God, and why do they not understand that? Why do people go through things in our world where we know, if only you knew God, your life would be different. If only you knew God, this, this person would be different. If only they had a touch of God in their life, they would be different. Their mindset would be different. If they had a wonderful counsel, their world would be completely changed. But why does the world not understand that? Why do some of us in this room at times don't understand that? And I believe the reason why is because a lot of us have not spent time to get counseling from our wonderful counselor. A lot of us have not spent time to give praises and acknowledge how mighty our God really is. A lot of us just have a, a, a compartment in our mind of what we believe Jesus is, but he can't even fit in that. You can't, compart you can't put him inside of a box. He's way bigger than that in your life. He needs to be uh, more important than that in your life. And, and we get a chance to look at this in, in Scripture, and I, I want us to read from Isaiah 9, 6, and it's the main Scripture that we've been looking at yet, um, last Sunday and today. For, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When I think about that, this is before he is born. You know, before I was born, my parents didn't say, and my son is going to come out. He's going to be awesome. He's going to be the best at this thing. He's going to be the best drummer ever. He's going to be this and this and that and that. I didn't have that title before I came out. I didn't have that title. All, all I knew for sure was, all, all my parents knew for sure was I was going to be a son, and they believed that I was going to be a great son, and they believed that what I could do is instilled in them to teach me. Those were the things that they knew, but somebody that was about to come before the world, for the world, had all of these things, had the government on his shoulders, had the weight of the world on his life, yet he can withstand that. And that's our mighty God. He has this title. He has this description that was given to him. He has this, he has this title that was given to his life that he was that important for this world. God was that important for this world. And when he came in the form of Jesus, when he came as as a human being, he had that ability. He had that characteristic in his life, those characteristics in his life to change the world forever. And the crazy thing is, is he just knew it. He just knew it. He just knew that he was going to be a wonderful counselor. He just knew that he's, he was going to be a mighty God. He just knew it. But do you know it? Do you know what it means for Christmas? to come here on this earth for us to celebrate a day for Christmas. It was the other day I was talking to Jeannie. And Jeannie and I have been decorating our house. You know, it's our first house, so we got a Christmas tree and we're putting up lights. And it's like every single day almost now we're like tinkering with something in our house for the Christmas ornaments or the decorations. And it's been, it's been such a great experience. And we have had Christmas music playing in our house and all these kind of things. And and the other day, I, I was laying in bed next to Jean, and I said, hey, you know what? And I told her, I, I don't know why, but I feel as if my mindset and my heart has not really been set on God being important for Christmas. I think all of the ornaments and Christmas trees have, have gotten to me where that's the thing that's important right now. And I told her, I, I don't want that. I, I need to change my mindset from that. I need to change how I see Christmas. And, and it, it was only because of us putting up ornaments and trees and everything that it was the first time we were doing it. But I, I, 
I spoke to God and I said, God, I, I don't want to rob you from your birthday, nor do I want to rob you from what you've done for this world because I wouldn't have any of this stuff if it wasn't for you. And I wouldn't be able to have the joy to put up Christmas lights if it wasn't for you. And I wouldn't be able to have the understanding of somebody came during this time to change my life before I was even born. And when I think about that, yesterday I was going around the house and just tinkering around with some Christmas things after I, I've talked to God about that. And it changed my perspective. I had so much joy. And I, I, I put up, I, 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 Jeannie puts up all the direc decorations and she makes everything look nice. The only thing I know how to do is, I was like, you know what? I, I think it would be awesome if I can say, hey, Alexa, turn on the Christmas tree. And the Christmas tree would turn on. Or if I said, hey, Alexa, turn on the Christmas lights outside. And they would just turn on. That's the only thing I know how to do. If it was up to me, my Christmas tree would have all different colors. But Jeannie like, has a certain way that she wants to decorate. And even just that, even me just plugging it in and, and, and going through my phone and going through my app doing that, I was like, God, Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for saving this world. And, and on this day, I choose to honor you by even putting this up. This is a celebration for you. This is a party for you. And when I can understand the weight of having a party for our wonderful counselor and our mighty God, it just changed my heart and the joy that I had to put up a Christmas tree and a Christmas light and all these kind of things. And it wasn't about Santa or reindeers or anything like that, but it was about knowing that my life changed and this world changed because our mighty God came. And that's something that I believe that the church, for us, we should understand. And when we go out during this season, when we go out during this time, to go and celebrate that, the fact that we have a wonderful counselor and a mighty God to be proud of, to be um, a child of, to be able to say that my father is this and my father is that, to be able to tell the world what they're missing out on and bring them into the family. You know, as I looked at our Facebook post yesterday, and if you guys can see outside of our church, we have a gift that we want to give to, like, the hospital and the kids that are in there, and it's just a teddy bear. It, it may just be a teddy bear to you. You may be going out shopping just for a teddy bear. But I challenge you, when you get that teddy bear or when you get that stuffed animal, pray over that. Pray over that animal because I know that kids draw near to stuffed animals and they draw close to those things. But just like we've heard, we can pray over objects and, and, and ask Holy Spirit when a kid hugs this toy, when they play with this toy, when they go to sleep with this stuffed animal, let them know that they got it on that day from a church who knows who you are, or let them feel your love and your peace when they hold this toy. You know, we can see the joy that Christmas brings, but if you can only imagine the joy that this toy will bring to a child that's in need in the hospital, it's, totally, it's, it's a totally different sight for many of you guys to even think about or see. And I had the opportunity to go and pray for somebody that was in the hospital, and she was a young child. And Miss Diana brought me, and, and, and Kimberly's family brought me, and Siomara and her mom came with me, and I was there, and I didn't even know the family. I didn't even know, what, I didn't even know exactly what to pray when I got into the room. I have never even met this person before. I've never even met this young child that was laying in that bed. I had nothing to say before I got into the door and I said, Holy Spirit, speak, please. I don't know this family. What am I going to say? I've never even seen a picture of them. I don't know what they look like. And I go into the hospital room and I get to see this child laying in this bed and she must have, she must have been probably, you know, five or six years old laying in that bed and I got to see her and all I said was, hey, how's it going? I want to pray for you. I'm here to just hang out with you guys. And when I prayed, I just asked, Holy Spirit, let your power, let your peace be in this room for this family. And I had nothing else to say to them besides telling the grandma that was sitting there, she was like, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. And then the mom said, hey, mom, mom this is a pastor from the church that um, the uh, Andrade family's from. And I, and, and I was so honored even to be able to be a part of that, and I got to pray for everyone in the room. Do I know if that prayer helped? I don't know. But do I know that they met the wonderful counselor and the mighty God that day? Yes, I do. And so that's the only thing that you have to know is that it's not your job to present a big picture for them to understand you are about to meet the mighty God when I pray for you. No, you just let them experience what you know of who a wonderful counselor is in your life and the mighty God that's in your life. That's the only thing that you can do because you're not God. But what you do have is the God inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you to counsel you in, in order what to say to people and tell them, this is what I feel that God wants me to tell you. Or this is what I learned from the wonderful counselor when I was going through your pro the same problems as you. Or this is what I believe that my mighty God can do for you. And that's how we need to present it to the world.
But you can only do that if you understand what the mighty, mighty God can do in your life. See, today, when we look at the different points that I have, we're going to see how is Jesus going to work through you, in you, for you? How is he going to do that? You know, a lot of us, we've been in church for a long time, and we may know these things, but if you truly know these things, it would be so easy for you to go out to the world and tell them about what Jesus has done in your life. It'd be so easy for you to be able to go and pray for people. It'd be so easy for you. Why? Because you know who you're talking about. For many of us in this room, if I ask you, tell me about your favorite sports player, you can name everything you can about them and some. You know, I, I've recently... Had, I recently just bought a pair of shoes, and, and, and I bought a pair of shoes, and it's from Jordan, and I was looking up my, things about Michael Jordan and why, it's, why there's significance to every shoe that he had, and there's a significance because it was played on, for instance, one called Flu Game, and it was a time where he wore the shoes where he was sick, and all these different things that the world knows about from a player of Michael, Michael Jordan. You, and I'm like, you know that he was sick on that day, and that's why you have those shoes, and, and it's, it's crazy. And when, when you ask a lot of people in the world, well, what happened on Christmas? Well, Santa comes, and the elves, and all these kind of things happen. I'm like, oh, wow. And, and, and you, you see how the world has presented Christmas, and we have robbed somebody from their birthday. And, and for me to, to have that a part of our world, I'm like, man, what can we do to help the world understand that this is when the mighty God came to our world? What can we do to help people understand? What can we do to help people see that? And the only thing that we can do is know him ourselves so that we can tell people about him. That's the only way. If you can understand that Jesus wants to work inside of you and help you so that you can be able to be used to work, so he can work through you, that's the best way. God's, God's not trying to hijack your life. No, he's trying, to, he's trying to be a part of your life. He's not trying to control your life. He's trying to help guide your life. There's a lot of differences to those words that a lot of people think, if I become a Christian, I can't do this, I can't do that. God's going to tell me what I can and can't do. Well, that's not exactly how God works. What he does is he guides you, and he's given you free will. He's given you the choice to make a decision to have him in your life or not have him in your life. But I'm telling you, the best decision I've ever made is to have a wonderful counsel and a mighty God in my life. And that's the best decision I've ever made. If you can look with me as we go through this, number one that I want to talk about is this, is in Colossians 1, 16. It says, for, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Can anybody say that that's the description for their life? No. But can I tell you that that's the description for our mighty God? is everything works for him, and it was created for him. And another thing, too, is if we go to Colossians 1.17, right after that, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. That's our mighty God. That's the description for him. That's the description that is on his life. And that description of that mighty God is a part of our lives if you allow him to be. And it's our job to be the spokesman. It's our job to be the spokeswomen, to go out and tell the world about our mighty God. It's our job to go out and tell the world that we have somebody who is a, a counselor who can help you. You know, last week in, in, in Sunday school, I, I spoke to my students and I said, you tell me, guys, what is your definition of a counselor? You tell me, what's your, what's your experience with a counselor? And some people's, some people's response was, well, I know they work with a principal, and other people's response were, well, I, I've gone to the counselor if I've gotten in trouble. And other people's response was, the counselor was the person that I had to go talk to for my classes. And if I can enroll in this class, and then we had college people talk about their counselors and everything. And, you know, my experience with a counselor was not like theirs. And my experience with a counselor was because I was... I, in elementary, I was one of my teacher's favorites. I got to go and bring the, atten uh, the attendance sheet to the counselor. That was my only experience with a counselor, but everyone has a different experience with a counselor. But I know that everybody can have the same experience with our wonderful counselor. And our wonderful counselor can change somebody's life forever with one conversation. Our wonderful counselor can change people's lives with one word, love. Our wonderful counselor can change people's lives with one touch, and you'll never be the same. If you can promote, if you can say, if you can speak about our mighty God in that way, 
Who wouldn't want to come to him? Our world is looking for help. Our world is looking for an opportunity for change. And the only person that can do that is our mighty God. He has a description on his life that literally says that he is like the person that is going to ch- that change the world forever. He has a description on his life that says that the weight of the government or even the government rests on his shoulders. Like everything is on him, yet he can withstand it. And he's the best person for it. And that's our mighty God. I want us to talk about this. Jesus' power is in you. His power and his authority is in you. Every description that I have just mentioned, everything that we have read in Colossians, everything that we have read in Isaiah, it's all in you if you allow him to work in you. Many of us have spoken about the testimonies of of, of us stepping out and praying for people. We've spoken about maybe even the stories of how we were too afraid to go and pray for somebody. We've heard stories from, you know, Paul Howard, who goes to Walmart to pray for people. We've heard stories about Pastor Khan going to Vietnam and praying for people, and Pastor Michael reaching out to people and counseling them, and and myself, me praying for people in Colombia when I've gone, in Vietnam, and in Houston. We've heard about all of these different stories, And and I've seen beforehand all the stories for you guys. But this has to be a, 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 something that happens all the time. Why? Is because every story, every time that you go and witness to somebody, every time you go and help somebody not commit suicide, every time you go and help somebody understand that they are saved and loved, every time their life now has been changed by our wonderful counselor and mighty God. Every time. But if we want to see our world change, we have to do that every time. Our, our job is not to, to go and gossip with people and figure out why this and that. Or Our job is not to go in and, and only be a shoulder to cry on. We've learned now that we can help people understand that they don't, they don't have to live that life anymore. Our job is to be there to be not only a friend like our Father has been to us, but also our job is to be a light because we are like our Father in heaven. And anywhere that there's darkness, we can light up because he lives inside of us. And we have to understand that. We have to understand that we carry that much power and authority in our life because our Father resides inside of us. The Holy Spirit is in our life. You know, for me, in my life, constantly, I know 100%. There is so many indications that I know that the Holy Spirit is living in my life. There's so many indications that I know that every time I step up to the pulpit and and preach, the, the devil doesn't like it. There's so many times that I've spoken that, I, that the lights turn out, that the camera shuts off, that all these things happen. And you know what? It doesn't bother me because I know for a fact that the world can't stand a mighty God. Why? Because the enemy is trying to control the world. But here's the thing. When you get into the presence of a mighty God, you have to bow. And you think about that in the stance of even the demons know they bow at the feet of Jesus. Even the demons know that they can't stand inside of a room when Jesus is there. So when you walk into a situation and you have Jesus in your life, you know they're going to bow. And they don't have power and authority over your life because the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. But you have to understand that the mighty God that we serve is in our life too. And everywhere that we walk, he's seen in our life. If If you're thinking right now of a situation that you're in, and you've tried to fix it yourself, or your spouse, or your family has tried to fix it, I invite you to invite the mighty God in your family. I invite you to invite my best friend, the Holy Spirit, the wonderful counselor, in your situation, and see what happens. See the change that's going to happen. See, when Jesus is able to work inside of you, I have a scripture that I want to read. Mark 16, 17 17 through 18. It says, These signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. In my name, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, they will cast out demons. They will pick up serpents. They will not be harmed by poison. Lay hands on the sick. Heal them. Speak with new tongues. That's if you believe in him. That's if you call on his name. And that's how mighty our God is. That's how mighty our God is. You know, I, I, I have this family that I've been um, hanging out with. And, they, you know, it's funny because they've come over to my house. And I see their son run over to the Spider-Man. And then he grabs the Spider-Man. He plays with the Spider-Man and everything. And I, and I was like, has he never seen Spider-Man before, you know? And they're like, nope. And I was like, wait, what? How have they not seen Spider-Man before? 
They said, because grandma says there's only one hero, Jesus. And I was like, oh, give me that Spider-Man. <laughs> like, you know? And, and, and when I think about that, wow, this kid only knows one hero. So it doesn't top, Spider-Man will never top Jesus Christ in his life because that was what he was taught. And if we can teach our world, there's nothing that can top Jesus Christ. The world can change. When we know that there's only one hero, one mighty God that you can call on, that's it. Nobody else. Nobody else's name carries that weight. You can't say any other name in this world. If you went to, if you went to a different state and said, do you know Sam Wynn? Nope. Do you know Jesus Christ? Oh, I've heard of him. There's only one name in this world that you can say in every single place, Jesus, that everybody at least knows of Jesus. They may not know him personally, but they've heard of him. There's only one name in, in the Hall of Fame that has, been, that has been there every single year, Jesus Christ. There's only one person in, with this name that that weight carries on their name every single time, Jesus Christ. That name is so powerful that it, it, can bring, it can bring people together. And also at the same time, that name has caused controversy because the devil doesn't like it. There's only one name that you can say that. If you say Sam Wynn, nobody knows. If you say Jesus Christ, everybody knows. And that's the weight that it carries. But if you can say to somebody that has heard of, of me, though, that's Sam Wynn that preaches about Jesus Christ. Oh, they'll know. They'll know. And, and the reason why is because it's not my life that they know. It's the life that I speak about. And I speak about Jesus Christ. That's the mighty God that we have. I think about Pastor Khan and, and his, his story that he shared. And many of you guys have heard that story. The first time that he truly encountered Jesus' healing power in his life. He went to a place called Prayer Mountain, and it was a place where a lot of these pastors, and he didn't know himself, they were like spirit-filled. And what does that mean? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They accepted that the Holy Spirit should live in their life. And at that time, Pastor Khan didn't, didn't know that. So they invited all the pastors to come up to the altar to pray for people. And this lady came up to, to get prayer, and, and he asked, how can I pray for you? And she had a, she had a problem with, with her voice. She couldn't speak at that moment. And so he was like, okay, let's pray. And um, Dear Father, help my sister, help her be healed uh, in Jesus' name. And she was like, no, pastor, pray for me. And she took his hand and put it on her throat. And, he, and then he prayed, and then all of a sudden she was healed. And then he was like, whoa. You know, and, and he looked at his hand like, what just happened? And for many of us, I, I, I think of that story with Pastor Khan, and it never really touched my heart until I prayed for somebody for the first time. And when I prayed for somebody for the first time, I remember, I remember praying for that person, and I thought to myself, whoa. And I looked at my hand, and I was like, whoa, Jesus is working through my life. Like, I literally felt Jesus working through my life. That's that mighty God that lives inside of us. If you haven't encountered that experience before, go pray for somebody. It's totally different when you ask, Holy Spirit, work through my life. In Jesus' name, bring healing right now. And then they get healed, you're like, whoa, Jesus is working in my life. See, but you can only experience that if you understand the mighty God that lives inside of you. You know why you have fear to not share about the gospel outside of this church? Because you don't really know him. You've got to know him. You've got to know everything about him. You have to know every single thing about him. And the best way to know that is if you have a true relationship with him. I'm telling you, I've had people come to me, Jeannie and I, for instance, about things about marriage and things about finances and things about questions about moving and all these kind of things. And I told them, the only person that has given me true answers is Jesus. And I've only followed Jesus. Many people have asked me, so what, why did you, you and Jeannie decide to live in Temple, Texas for three years? I said, that's where God called us to be. When I had to get information about my, from my wonderful counselor, I said, God, what am I supposed to do? And you know, God, God shared with me exactly this. I was boohooing and crying the day that she opened up her offer letter and it said, Temple, Texas is not Houston. My sisters and I, we locked eyes with each other and we just cried. We didn't even talk to each other. We just cried. And we cried because they knew that I was leaving. It was the first time I was leaving for my family. And we just bawled our eyes out. Yet at the same time, we were happy for Jeannie because something opened up in her life. And at that moment, I had to pray. I said, God, why? Why did you just make me leave Houston? Why? And I, and I had to speak to my wonderful counselor, and I had to see that he was so mighty that he opened up a job opportunity for Jeannie and for myself to be out in Temple, Texas, for me to still be able to commute to church every single week. See, my mighty God opens up the doors and opportunities for me there. How did I know that my mighty God was doing something important? Because when I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, I had one of the world-renowned endocrinologists work in Temple, Texas, which was my wife's boss. 
That was the only way. God set everything up for me, which was perfect, that I got help in every way that I needed. God set it up to where my marriage, Jeannie and I, we just based everything off of what we learned with God because there was nobody out there to tell us, this is what you should do in your marriage. This is how you should live your life. This is what, it was just her and I and the Holy Spirit, and he taught us everything. Our marriage is close and tight because we base our marriage and our relationship off of God's love, and that's true. You can ask her that. She, she asked me the other day, and I forgot who was speaking on, on the pulpit that day. She, she said, so who's your friend? Who do you talk to? And, and I was like, Jesus? And she was like, wow, really? I was like, yeah, Jesus. She's like, well, whenever you, we go through problems, like, who do you talk to? And I was like, Jesus. And she, was, she said, really? And yes, Jesus. There are many times where Jeannie has seen me lay in bed, and I'm talking to her, and then all of a sudden I just close my eyes, and I zone out for a second. And it's not because I was tired of what she was saying. I literally ask God, what should I say right now? Or what am I, what's happening right now? What should I do? And she's like, you just talked to God? And I was like, yeah, I did. And that's the relationship that I have with my mighty God because there is no situation that he can't handle, so why not talk to him? There's no situation that God can't handle, so why not pray to him? There's no situation that he can't change, so why not ask him, Lord, can you be a part of this? And he's like, yep, I'm here. The one powerful story that I know that has changed my life forever to see the love of a father and the love of my father in heaven is this. When I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and, and, and my dad wanted to be there in the hospital, he found out on a Tuesday prayer and he was like, wait, what? My son's in the ICU. I can't be there. It's a three-hour drive. I need to be there right now. And he prayed and he said, God, and you know, Pastor Khan, he was like, God, please just teleport me there. We learned about teleporting. So let me teleport there. And God was like, no, I'm already there. It's okay. And he said that to my dad, and my dad shared that with me. Pastor Khan shared that with me. And man, it just, that's our mighty God. He's always by our side. He's never far away from us. He's always by our side. You know, the song Reckless Love has, has changed the way that I listen to it when I think of how mighty he is. There's no mountain he won't climb up. You know, there's no, like, darkness that he can't light up, and there's no wall he won't kick down to get to us. Like, that's our mighty God. You know, I, I, I see my life with my relationship with God, like a, just like a movie. And at the end, the hero always wins. And in our life, we, with God in our life, we always win. We have to understand that our father is the reigning champ and nobody has taken him off of his throne and nobody can and ever will. That's our mighty God. You know, when somebody, and, and I've worked with, I'm working with like a boxing company right now and all of these kids have all these different names before they go into the boxing ring and they, they call out their name before the, the fight starts and all these kind of things. And sometimes I think of the names and I'm like, wow, like that's, okay, pretty boy Ricky or like El Gallo, like all these different names. I'm like, what caused you to like have that nickname? Like you want to be called the rooster and stuff. And then they tell me like, oh, this is what it means to me and all these kind of things. But can you imagine every time we have a battle that we go in and, and the angels announce, here comes mighty God. Everybody's like, we're done. Like we're out. We can't fight him. Like mighty God's here. And so that's the understanding that we have to have is in every situation, you say mighty God, he shows up. There's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing that the enemy can do about that. Mighty God's here. We're out of luck. We can't do anything. And you have to understand, you have to understand the weight that his name carries. It's so powerful. It's so, it's, I don't know how to say it besides it's so, it's so awesome to know that our father has that kind of name. It's so awesome to know that you can call on somebody that's going to be there in that instant and change the situation as soon as he steps in. Who do you know that can do that? Who do you know? You don't know anybody else besides Jesus that can do that. So let's tell the world about that even more. You know, the, the, the second part that I want to talk about is Jesus' power is here to help you. It's here to help you. A lot of us think that sometimes we think, I don't deserve this help. I don't deserve to talk to him. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve that. That's the enemy telling you that you don't deserve a relationship with your father. What kind of lie is that? I know I can see right now there's a lot of fathers in this room. There's a lot of dads in this room, and you would never say to your son, you don't deserve a relationship with me, but the enemy would tell you that. The enemy would tell you that you've made so many mistakes that your dad shouldn't hang out with you, that you shouldn't talk to your dad, that you shouldn't be in a relationship. He doesn't love you. You know all the mistakes that you make? He doesn't love you. And the next time the enemy tells you that, the next time you, you say to yourself, man, I can't pray right now. Like, I, I've... I'm not in the right place to talk to God right now. Tell the enemy to just get off. Because there's never a time that your father doesn't want to hear your voice. There's never a time that your father doesn't want to sit down and talk to you. Because that's exactly what he desired. 
He desired the best relationship he could have with you. And that's why he made the best sacrifice he could for you. He gave his life for you. He gave his life so that you can understand that I'm such a mighty God. I'm such a, be- I'm such a great father. I am willing to give up everything I have so that you can have the best life and best opportunities in this world. And you deserve that. And every time that the enemy tries to tell you otherwise, just remember, my father has given the best sacrifice for me. There's nothing that the enemy can say that'll change that. And that's a mighty God. That's how mighty our God is. That's, that's the best gift of all, is that our father understood that he wanted a relationship for us, for us to have the best relationship, father and son, father and daughter, best relationship he can ever give, was for him to make the best sacrifice ever, his life. His life. You know the term, like, I would take a bullet for you? Jesus did so much more than that. He did so much more. And and how crazy it is for me to think about him dying on the cross. He's so mighty that even even the words when we sing, what a beautiful name, death could not hold you. He's so mighty, so mighty that death couldn't conquer him. It was funny, every time I think about this, it makes me laugh because I think about the devil on that day when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He thought, gotcha. He thought, it's over. I'm taking over now. And then God came back, and Jesus came back and was like, nope. And the best part about it, when he came back, he was like, I'm going to give every single child power and authority over you. That's what you get. And when I think about that, it makes me laugh because the enemy thinks he's won every single time in the situations in our life. But Jesus is so mighty. Our God is so mighty. There's nothing that he can do that will change that. There's nothing that the the devil can do that will change that. When we can see people's lives and we can see that they need Jesus even more, it makes me even more angry inside to see the devil trying to mess with people. You know, whenever I've, I've spoken to a lot of students and I ask them about the things that they go through and they tell me all these things, I'm like, man, devil, man, you're so petty. Like, are you serious? And I have to tell them, hey, you have a mighty God on your hands. You have Jesus in your life and the devil can't do that to you. You've got to understand who you are. You're a child of God. Your father in heaven is the champion. He is the greatest of all time. And when we can see that, when we can understand that there is nothing that he can do, nothing that the enemy can do or say that will change the fact that he is still underneath the authority of our Father. That's the best thing. That's our mighty God. So I want us to read Isaiah 40, 29, 31. And he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Point number two was Jesus' power is here to help you. When we look at the scripture, the scripture tells it all. There are times that we're going to grow weary. There are times that we get tired. There are times that we stumble and fall. But it doesn't matter. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Do you have hope this morning? My question is, do you have hope in the Lord this morning? That is something that you have to have. Hope is the driving factor for you is to hope and know that Jesus Christ is a mighty God. You have to have that hope and understanding that our Father in heaven, nothing can change that. Our Father is in heaven and he's on the throne and he is going to give us power and strength whenever we are weak and we stumble and fall. He is going to give us that power and authority. Do you know that he's a mighty God this morning, church? Do you know it? You've got to know it. In every situation that you're in, you've got to know my mighty God is on the way. He's here right now. He's here right now. Best time for me to tell you guys when I truly experienced my mighty God was on the way was the first time I was in the ICU. And when I was in the ICU and I had nobody in the room with me and I tried to hold my emotions in for myself and I was laying in that bed and I was stuck with the IV and all these kind of things and just hearing the beep and the sounds and all it reminded me is all the movies that I've seen when people are in the ICU, something bad is happening, you know, and all the doctors rushing and all this stuff. And I told my whole entire family, I said, everybody that came that day, I said, hey, I just need a minute. Uh, can you guys just step out of the room? And Jeannie was always by my side and stuff, and I said, oh, uh, can I just have the room? And she stepped out too, and then I just laid in bed. And I sat there, and I I thought to myself, why, God? If you're a mighty God, why, God? Where are you right now? 
where are you right now? And I just cried my eyes out in that room. I bawled myself, like just crying in tears, and I was just hurting, and I was in pain, and it wasn't even from anything that was affecting me. It was the fact that I thought that my God let me down. And he reassured me and reassured me, I'm still here with you. I'm still here with you. I'm still here with you. And I got that reassurance. Why? Because I had peace. As soon as I cried and I called out to God, I said, God, please be here with me. And it was just like all the fear and worries and anxieties just like lifted up out of the room. And I was just like, whew. It's like, wow, thank you, God. You know, sometimes in our life where it may get rocky and it, you may stumble and you may fall, you may, you may have times where you are, are weak. But remember the scripture that we just read. Remember the scripture that says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Call upon the Lord. Call upon our mighty God. Pastor Michael spoke about wonderful counselor. I, I'm speaking about mighty God. There are two characteristics that you know. There are two names and titles that you know that our Father have. Our Father has. He's a mighty God, wonderful counselor. And I challenge you, church. We're we're gonna, in the next in the next two weeks. We're going to learn more two more names, and you guys already have seen it in Isaiah, but. We get the opportunity this year to look at the names that he has and our gift to the world is to tell them about the wonderful counselor. Our gift to the world is to tell them about our mighty God. And it's on you to give out that best gift of all. I'm telling you, it's not the teddy bear that changes the hospital. It's the fact that it, your heart giving it to them, them receiving a gift that they didn't think they were gonna receive. Just like we didn't think we were gonna receive salvation, but it was a gift you didn't think you were gonna receive. And pray over those gifts when you give it to people this year. If you have family members that you're going to go visit, try your best to introduce them to the wonderful counselor and the mighty God that we know. If you have, if you have uh, even your in-laws, even your best friends, even your coworkers, it's, it's not just Merry Christmas. It's, hey, I just want to let you know that God loves you, and I hope you have a great holiday. It's something like that that would change their life. I'm telling you that all it takes for people sometimes is to just know that somebody out there in this world cares for them. And when you let them know that our wonderful counselor and mighty God cares for them, that'll change their life. And all it takes is for you to introduce them to him. That's it. God will do the rest. Just introduce them to him. And God will change everything. The last one that I want us to look at is this. Is Jesus' power is shown through us. And I want us to, I want us to hone in on this part. Is Jesus' power is shown through us. If we have a wonderful counselor and a mighty God and we have experienced that, our lives should be a walking billboard for him. Our, we should be the best spokespeople we can be for our wonderful counselor and mighty God. How is that? It's because Jesus' power is shown through us. People will see, people will experience the love of God and they will experience his, his joy and happiness when they can see it in your life. Who would... Who would come to you for information? Who would come to you to learn about our Lord and Savior if your life did not show it? If your life didn't show it, who would come to you? You know, it was, it's funny because before I, before I was working at, at a place, and it, it, it was a place where I was working with a bunch of guys, and they knew exactly what I was about, and they knew I was a pastor and all these kind of things, and you know, I, I, told, I told them that I would not, you would never catch me compromising who I am. And they knew it. And they would test me and they would try me and all these kind of different things. They're, and they would say things like, come on, Sam, just, just, just cuss one time for us. Like, just even say it in your head right now. We just want you to do it. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they know and they would try. And you know what? You know, it changed my life and, and how I knew that me being a representation of Christ changed somebody else's life is because one of the guys came up to me and, and I was sitting at the table and some, someone came into the store and they were talking about me and they were talking all loud and stuff and then they're like, whoa, whoa, hey, our friend Sam, he's a pastor, so don't talk like that around him. And I was like, whoa. I was like, thanks, man. You know, like he just said that to me and then, and then, he, and then this guy sat down and just started questioning God and he started saying all these kind of things and he started talking crazy. He was just saying all these kind of things. Oh, this is what God's about then. Why is all this stuff happening? All this stuff. I didn't even say a single word yet. I didn't say a single word. And then my friend interjected and was like, hey, don't question who he believes in in front of him like that. And if he believes in a God like that, 
then there has to be someone that's out there that he believes in because his life represents it. And I was like floored. I was like, whoa. That's how I know that your life as a representation of Christ can change people's lives without them even hearing a word of the gospel out of your mouth. And it opens up doors and opportunities because they see what you respect and you respect your father in heaven. And sooner or later, they will understand that their respect that you have is not fake. And when they realize that the respect that you have is not fake for your father in heaven, they will realize that that's something that you're truly about. And I, and I, I know that if, even if it's business and even if it's with your friends at school or friends at work or, your, you know, even if it's with your in-laws or even with your immediate family that's not saved yet, if you can hold and stand firm and know that you have a mighty God on your side, you don't have to tinker between this or that. No, you stand for what you believe in, and their life will change. There is no push. There is nothing like that that you have to change the way that you believe in your God. You stand firm in who you believe in, and they will see that Jesus is working through you. Why? Because you can tell them. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they're doing to you. But if you show God's love, that's all that they need. That's all that will change. You know, I, I, had a, I had a family member that has steered far away from Christ, and I've tried praying for them, you know, and I've tried talking to them and all these kind of things. It was difficult. And, and this person, they, they went through a lot. They've gone through a lot. And every time I saw this person, I was never good enough for them and all these things that was hurting my feelings. And I thought, there's nothing that I can do. I've tried my best. There's nothing that I can do. And one, one day I, I, I just received a, a message from them and I read the message and I was like, oh, they're blaming me for everything. Okay. And then I, I couldn't do anything that day because I was like, there's only one solution, and that one solution is for me to, to forgive them. And I don't even have to really, and I was telling myself, I don't even have to forgive them. I didn't do anything wrong. I, what, why? Why me? And on that day, God really checked my heart and said, and I felt God telling me, if you want to be the best representation you can be of me, you do what I would do. And instead of writing a whole paragraph of everything, I just, I just apologized for not meeting their standards of what they need and all these kind of things. And I wrote it out to them. And, and I just sent it and I said, man, that felt good. Like the weight of that was off of my shoulders. And I received a text message back. Uh, in my opinion, a sincere apology that I felt that he gave. And it just came back to me and I was like, wow. Like only God could, could have done that. And it was because I showed Christ through my life. And I share that story only because I know that there are a lot of us in this room that may struggle with that that not one bit of your life should compromise anything. You should be the best representation of Christ that you can be. The best. Try your best to be the best representation at work and with your family and, and with your spouse and, and with your children. Be the best representation that you can be so that they can see Jesus working through you. I want to read a scripture for you guys, and this is from Acts 1.8, and I'm going to close here. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And we've all heard the scripture before. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be my witness. The Holy Spirit is here to be a part of your life so that every place that you go, every person that you talk to, they'll experience Jesus because he is a part of your life. This Christmas, this season that we were celebrating, we just, I feel like we just blinked our eyes and I was sitting at the Thanksgiving table and thanking God for everything he's done this year. And now all of a sudden we're a couple of weeks away from Christmas. The year is coming to an end and it's so fast. It's so fast. And I'm like, God, I... 2020 is coming, what, what happened, you know? And, and, and it feels like everything is happening so fast. But it's not too late to still tell somebody that you care about, about Jesus. It's never too late. It's never too late. Give them the best gift of all. Let them meet your mighty God. Let them meet your wonderful counselor. Give them that chance. And if you're in this room today and you need to meet your wonderful counselor or your mighty God, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. If we, can, if we can, why don't we all stand to our feet?
at this moment, I just want for you guys to just pray. Talk to God on your own. If you need him to be your wonderful counselor at this moment, speak to him, wonderful counselor. If you need him to be your mighty God, speak to him, mighty God. But have a conversation with your father this morning. Not with your pastor, but with your father. wonderful counselor and mighty God. That is who you are. You're a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. And in whatever situation that we are dealing with, Lord, we give you the authority to take part of it, and take control of it. God, as our wonderful counselor, guide us, direct us, give us a better understanding, speak to us, Lord. And as our mighty God, tear down those walls, shine that light in the situation that we can't even understand or fathom, Lord, but be that mighty God that you are, Lord. We need you even more. We need your help even more. God, if that's in our, our finances or in our relationship, in our marriages, Lord, shine through even more. Shine through even more, mighty God. Take control. Take control, mighty God. Wonderful counselor, speak to us. God, I thank you so much for this message, Lord, and bringing the realization that you are on our side and we have the best father in the world, the best father in the universe, the creator. God, and I thank you so much for that. I thank you for being a part of my life. I thank you for being a part of our lives. You truly are a mighty God. And you deserve all the praise that we can give. So, Father, you deserve all the praise. And I thank you for who you are. And I thank you for what you have done and what you're going to do. And, Lord, I give you praise and honor because you deserve it. And you are king of kings, Lord. And you deserve our love. And you deserve our, our, our attendance. You deserve our focus, Lord. And we give it to you. And we love you, Lord. And God, I thank you so much for this time that we have been together as a church. And I ask, Lord, that you be with us as we go and enjoy donuts and coffee, Lord. Help us to be able to speak to one another and share our testimonies and just share the goodness of who you are, Lord. And for every stuffed animal, every teddy bear that is given to these children, Lord, we ask that you change that person's life that holds that, that teddy bear, that kid's life that holds that teddy bear. Let them know that there's somebody there in this time of need for them, in the hospital bed, or wherever these go, in the families, that you are changing their life and you are still thinking about them. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, thank you so much for being a part of our series and being here at our church. Please go and enjoy donuts and coffee. If we need prayer, Pastor Michael and I will be here at the